Uh, so as you saw, I just was putting on the um, bed liner. I used a, a black bed liner and um, that stuff is stinky. Oh, I had a respirator and fans going and it's still stinky. Um, but uh, you don't know how much the, the undercoating actually does from a sound dampening standpoint. I think it probably helps a little bit. I did two coats uh, over the entire inside and then three and four coats in some places in the wheel wells. So uh, the coverage was really good. As stuff rolls on thick, I used a 3 8 nap roller and then uh, brushed in the corners I couldn't get, but it went on nice and thick and dried hard as a rock, uh, even in the colder temperatures. So uh, pretty happy about that. But, you know, I think cosmetically it looks great. Any place you can see the inside of the body now is just gonna be this kind of matte black color. Um, and if, hey, if I get a little sound dampening out of it, uh, even better. So over the next few uh, clips here, I think you're gonna see me um, mostly doing whatever it takes to get the body on the car, uh, the body on the frame for the last time. Uh, yeah, I feel a little jilted. It doesn't look like my wheels and tires are gonna be in from Factory 5 uh, for probably another month. Um, and I don't wanna, uh, I don't wanna wait. So I'm getting, I'm getting robbed of my opportunity to go-kart this thing and horrify the neighbors, but hey, that's okay. Um, I, I wanna keep marching on. So I'm dump, jumping into whatever it takes to get the body put on. Uh, one of the first things I was gonna do um, is kind of address the fact that I'm not doing uh, any, I'm not doing the quick jacks front or rear, so that means I have to now kind of modify how the body mounts uh, in both of, in all four of those positions. So I came up with a solution, I think, solves a couple problems. One, it, it greatly simplifies bolting the body on in the back. Uh, it's gonna be far more rigid and it'll also give me some flexibility. Uh, and it also solves, solves my quick jack uh, cosmetic dilemma. So I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that um, and uh, see what you think. So uh, not to make too much out of nothing here, but as you can see, it's just a simple um, steel bracket that I made that bolts into uh, the frame here. Um, this is the stock hole and I added an additional uh, hole here. And as anybody that's put these together knows that that bolt is, is no fun. Actually, well, in my case, neither of these bolts are, are any fun getting in there. Everything's in the way. But uh, I'm in there, I, I got them in there, and I won't have to do it again. Um, they're there permanently. And so now I only have this hole to contend with. Um, or, or I should say, I only need to access this spot here. So when I put the, when I put the body in, I'm using half inch stainless socket head. Um, as you can see, I, I, I turned the head down, got rid of the knurls, um, streamlined it a little bit, put a nice bevel on the front, kind of make it more, make it look less like a bolt, more like, uh, well, I don't know, more like something other than a bolt. And so now when I drop the body on, this goes through the outside, through the op existing opening in the body. And now I've got some variability here. I can adjust this in and out um, and then uh, do whatever thickness spacer is required. And uh, you know, I can kind of fine tune that. Uh, I'm also, I think I'm gonna elongate this hole a little bit and that'll give me some up and down flexibility. So all of these things are, are, are gonna, I think, make positioning the body on the, on the frame and certainly relative to how it contacts the aluminum, I think it'll make it that a lot easier to kind of square things up. Um, and then, uh, you know, additionally, I, I really feel that this is a much stronger scenario here before the bolts are kind of hanging way out. So you've got two bolts here if you mount it via the stock method. And these bolts will always give you some of this. I mean, there's no way they can't. So by doing it this way, you know, this thing is, is rigid. It's not going anywhere. It's eighth inch steel and, and it's certainly strong enough to support the body. So I think it solves a bunch of problems uh, in one fell swoop. So uh, there you have it. Again, I just made a whole lot out of nothing. I told you I wouldn't do that and I did. So uh, on to the next little whatever this might be to get the body in place and start the body work.
So as you can see, that took, that took a little longer than it normally does to get the body on and off. The, um, the weather stripping makes everything tight, and also I had to be kind of specifically cautious with how it went on so I wasn't tearing the weather stripping. You know, in previous times I put the body on or taken it off, uh, I could, you know, I wasn't all that concerned with some of those edges because um, there was no weather stripping there. So, um, so let's keep our fingers crossed, but this might be the last time I put this body on. I hope it is, uh, which means that, um, well, if it's the last time I put the body on, it means everything went okay. I still have this uh, horrible fear that I've forgotten something. <laughs> so maybe some aluminum panel that I haven't put in yet, I, I don't know, but um, I still have that kind of nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. But I think really from this point on, I'm good to go. Uh, after trying a, different, a few different uh, approaches to sanding um, the hood, and this was my first step into gapping, um, gapping any of these panels, uh, I ended up settling on my orbital sander uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it gave me a lot of control um, over, over kind of cutting this edge. It also has dust collection, which was uh, particularly handy because this is, gets pretty messy. I originally had set out uh, using my... Um, pneumatic grinder with a little three inch um, abrasive pad and it was too aggressive um, cut in too deep so even with some of the lighter weight grit it just felt too aggressive whereas this um, orbital sander I was using uh, 100 grit paper and I could really sneak up on it um, and had a nice big cutting surface area too it's a five inch so uh, you know maybe if you're doing the same thing you might want to give a good old-fashioned you know orbital sander a try um, Seemed to work out well in my case. So I figure I may as well continue along with the general theme of this build, and that is not leaving well enough alone. Um, and as you've seen so far, I decided to uh, kind of apply that stance or that logic uh, right to the 
to the hood latches. And uh, I did make them so I can convert them back if I wanted to use the, the hood latch that came with the car, but I kind of wanted to see what this looked like to see if it's something I wanted to pursue. And I, now that I see them in place, I, I really like them and I think I made a good choice. So let me show you what I've done here. Um, I, I don't, again, once again, I don't mean to make uh, a lot out of something or a lot out of nothing here, but um, kind of a neat, neat thing and, and different. And um, now let's see what you think. So here's what they are. Here's what they look like in place. And I replaced the hood latch handle with a half inch stainless steel socket head. Um, uh, and I turned it down on the lathe so it would fit inside the, the, this housing. And I then put a nice chamfer on the top to, to make it look um, you know, a little, little more custom. And then I you know, heated it up. Um, during the welding process, it heated up and it turned this nice kind of bronzy color, which I think I'm going to leave. Um, and, and the way you open it, see, I have a hex key uh, and I'll be able to, I'm going to make a nice kind of short, stubby little hex key that'll drop right, just an Allen head. Um, and I'll keep that in my cubby. So anytime I want to get in the hood, I just turn that and twist that. And, and uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out if I need to do a, a hood handle, I'll, I'll kind of cross that cross that bridge when I get to it but uh, you know right now I can lift it up by just pulling on that but I'll, I'll see I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I might have to do something a little different there but that's where we sit on the hood latches just for you to kind of wrap this part of the small part of the build up with a, a finished image of how it looks So now that I've cut away um, the top skin, this allows me to recess my, um, my hood scoop, which is fiberglass, um, down into this opening. And, uh, and, and ultimately it will give me a nice smooth transition. Um, my, my hood scoop's thickness is almost identical to this top skin. So uh, it'll, it'll kind of, you know, um, transition nice and nice and cleanly into that, and I get this really nice big bonding surface here between the two uh, between the two units. So I can bond fiberglass to fiberglass well um, together very well. So, but before you do any of that, I need to fix this scenario here. These two pieces, these two skins, you know, the top skin and bottom skin, aren't really attached. They look like they're maybe glued in a few spots. They were glued here, but definitely not in the center section here. So before any of this can work, these need to be permanently bonded together. So that's that's what I'm setting out to do right now.
So what you're seeing here is me spreading a long strand fiberglass filler. And I'm using this because it's actually a pretty good bonding uh, material. It, it, it is a filler, so any of the gaps that might be between the hood and the scoop will be filled up nicely with this, but uh, it will bond these two surfaces together um, in, a, in a very kind of robust way. I've practiced with this material before and it's the, kind of the perfect choice here. So I'm gonna leave, make a nice bed of this, drop the hood scoop into it, and then clamp it in place. Uh, so I decided to uh, grind this downturn leg to shape, and, and first of all, this downturn leg is there for purely for strength, and obviously there's a cosmetic benefit as well, but basically by putting that downturned leg uh, on this perforation, it, it stiffened up the, the part quite a bit, but um, I decided to grind it to shape using this piece of quarter inch steel plate, 
uh, ended up giving me a really nice clean finished edge all the way around that I, a little bit of sanding and, and um, got me right to where I wanted to be. Yeah, so uh, here we go, a little bit more fun with some perforated steel. Um, this, is, this is how the, the underside of the hood looks right now. And, and you know, it's, it's unsightly, it's just kind of unfinished. Obviously, a lot of this is gonna be sanded and kind of cleaned up here, but, but really there is no simple way to clean this up. And I knew going into this um, that this is kind of how it would look. So, um, I, so, so, very early on, I, I knew I was going to do something that kind of sealed this space up here. So this is this is what I'm going to end up doing. Um, another another piece of perforated steel. It's going to screw into here. Uh, it'll be painted to match the the rest of the hood. Uh, but this does two things. One is it kind of cleans up the way the inside of the engine bay looks. And you know, I'm not building a show car. I'm not all that concerned with some of these little details but but this is pushing it right this is pretty this is pretty damn ugly right here so uh, this does two things so one is it cleans up the inside and the second thing it does is because this perf is relatively open you can see through it pretty easily and when you're looking through this into the engine bay from the outside uh, you know as we all know these 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 engines are not centered within um, centered on the car so you know if you're looking through the uh, looking through this you're not seeing something that you know that lines up it's not saying you know it's not saying cobra perfectly centered here it's not um you know the lines don't line up right and plus looking into the engine bay is, is not all that attractive so this will also serve uh, as a method of obscuring a little bit more view um and at the same time i'm not really limiting my my airflow because this this is functional you know i, I mean this is this is intentional here in terms of trying to create more airflow out of the out of the engine compartment. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Um, next step is going to fiberglass some threaded inserts in a couple of locations. Uh, this is going to get all sanded down like all the the perf will. Uh, and kind of at the same time, I'm going to do all the metal work at the same time, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see once I get this screwed in place and what it looks like on the car if it does do what I'm hoping, which is obscuring more of that view into the engine bay. Um, so here we go. Uh, so here's what it looks like after the the uh, T-nuts are uh, buried into the fiberglass. You saw me, I used a Forstner bit, which gave me a nice flat bottom hole, just enough to register these little T-nuts. So when I 
kind of sunk them into fiberglass. They would stay in the exact position I wanted to. And then I, you saw me stretch a piece of uh, fiberglass uh, mat over it, fairly heavy mat, and then uh, soaked everything in resin. And they are not going anywhere. Um, they're very, uh, very rigid. So you can kind of see there. And, uh, oops, sorry, where are you go? There you go. So that's what they look like. Um, next step, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this mesh in place and this uh, perforated steel. And let's see, um, let's see if my plan works in terms of it uh, cleaning up the view from the outside of the car. So that's, that's coming up next. So it's a little hard to see what I'm doing here, but uh, there's a rubber grommet that I'm putting these screws through. And the, the idea behind that grommet is to offer a little bit of a kind of a, a soft tension between the screen or the perforated steel and the fiberglass hood um, uh, in an attempt to make sure there are no rattles and also in case things kind of move around, it'll be a nice cushion for it. So I figure I may as well continue along with the general theme of this build, and that is not leaving well enough alone. Um, and as you've seen so far, I decided to uh, kind of apply that stance or that logic uh, right to the to the hood latches. And uh, I did make them so I can convert them back if I wanted to use the, the hood latch that came with the car, but I kind of wanted to see what this looked like to see if it's something I wanted to pursue. And I, now that I see them in place, I, I really like them and I think I made a good choice. So let me show you what I've done here. Um, I, I don't, again, once again, I don't mean to make uh, a lot out of something or a lot out of nothing here, but um, kind of a neat neat thing and, and different. And um, now let's see what you think. So here's what they are, here's what they look like in place. And I replaced the hood latch handle with a half inch stainless steel socket head. Um, uh, and I turned it down on the lathe so it would fit inside the, the, this housing. And I then put a nice chamfer on the top to, to make it look um, you know, a little, little more custom. And then I you know, heated it up. Um, during the welding process, it heated up and it turned this nice kind of bronzy color, which I think I'm going to leave. Um, and, and the way you open it, see, I have a hex key uh, and I'll be able to, I'm going to make a nice kind of short, stubby little hex key that'll drop right, it's just an Allen head. Um, and I'll keep that in my cubby, so anytime I want to get in the hood, I just turn that and twist that. And, and uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out if I need to do a, a hood handle, I'll, I'll kind of cross that cross that bridge when I get to it, but uh, you know, right now I can lift it up by just pulling on that, but I'll, I'll see, I'll, 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 uh, I might have to do something a little different there. But that's where we sit on the hood latches, just for you to kind of wrap this part of the, small part of the build up with a, a finished image of how it looks. Here's what the hood looks, hood scoop looks like in place. Uh, all the surfaces are blended in. It's ready for uh, probably one more real thin skim coat of, of filler and then primer. So I'm not, not far off, but um, I, it's really hard to see, I think, on camera. But this surface here is all coplanar. There's no bump uh, anywhere here. So the hood kind of dies right into the side of the scoop. And that was, that was, that was my goal, and that was kind of difficult to achieve but it, I got there and um, letting the scoop into the hood was the solution there so I'm kind of glad I stumbled onto that one and this is also the first peek at the second set of mesh uh, the second set uh, of perforated steel bolted to the bottom and and I I love the way it looks because it you can kind of see through the inside a little bit to the uh, engine bay but not much and I didn't want that to be the first thing you noticed I didn't want you to look through the the perforated seal, I kind of wanted you to look at it. And again, this is going to be painted same color as the car, same color as the body of the car. I'm not trying to draw too much attention to it. Um, and I'll see if I can show you the inside. Love the way it looks on the inside, by the way. Nothing's bolted in place yet, but 
Let's see if I can get this open. So that is definitely a kind of a far more finished looking underside. Um, and again, that's gonna be painted to match the, the body color. So that's, um, I think a, I'm gonna call that one a win. Definitely happy with that. Not easy to do with one hand. Well, there we have it. Hood scoop completed.